how do we stay mindful and find balance in today's fast-paced world? This is what we're exploring in today's episode. So grab your tea, come on in, and let's dive into this. Welcome everyone to this first episode of Mindful Mastery. My name is Vanessa Ooms, and in this podcast, we're diving into the depths of our inner working so that we can cultivate lives of purpose and fulfillment. And today we're talking about mindfulness in the digital age. So the world has changed a lot, especially in the last 30 or 40 years. I'm probably one of the last generations that will remember days before internet. My childhood memories are of listening to my mom's vinyl records in the living room and making mixtapes off the radio onto cassette tapes. You know, it was very much an analog life. And... I still remember getting the first computer in our school and how big of a deal that was. And then we got into the instant messaging uh, applications that were just mind boggling, that you could type messages and send them to somebody in another town, in another house, was just, it was revolutionary. And you know, cell phones started to become a thing, the big old car phones. And then it gradually evolved into flip phones and into the smartphones that we have now. And this technology has just mushroomed and grown exponentially in the last 30 years to where it's just unreal. Now we've got AI and all of this technology that can make our lives a lot easier. It can really make our work efficient, but at the same time, it can swallow us whole if we're not careful. And that's what I want to talk about today is how to remain mindful and balanced in this digital age, how to use these technologies to our advantage, but also have time when we're unplugged just to reconnect with nature and with what's really important in our lives because Social media platforms, the creators of them, have actually admitted that they've engineered them in such a way to hold your attention and keep you on the platforms for as long as humanly possible. And if we're not careful, especially people who are creators, if you're not careful, you can get sucked into this momentum this energy of needing to create more 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 and and bend yourself to the algorithm over and over and over again to get more likes get more attention get more views and it's a dangerous game because the algorithms are always changing and I don't know if any of you follow Mark Groves, but he really inspired me today because he is deleting his Facebook and his Instagram accounts because he noticed that these algorithms were just starting to eat him up, eat him alive. And he was starting to notice that it was starting to affect his creative spirit, that raw creative spirit, because rather than just creating from a place of passion, what he wants to say and express, he started thinking about how he should play more to the algorithm and, oh, what's the trending audio that we should use? And, oh, what about this? And what about that? And it was taking away from his authenticity and his true creative spirit, which can happen to any of us, really. I've been there too, where I've, and I've mentioned it on this channel before, on my YouTube channel, where I've noticed that I have even gotten caught up in the algorithm and the analytics and trying to hop on trends and whatever, and it's not sustainable and it's not authentic and people can feel it and I can feel it and it just doesn't feel good. So we've talked about creators a little bit, even consuming uh, social media, being on the consumer side of this is equally as dangerous because you can lose hours of time on these platforms just scrolling, 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 and it's easy to become unconscious of what you're consuming, what you're actually ingesting energetically with all of these different people, all of these different accounts, all of this different information, it's wild. (sighs) 
I just had to take a breath because I could feel myself getting ramped up. (laughs) But this is the thing. Without even realizing it, we can get pulled into this fast-paced energy of these platforms. And you notice now with TikTok and Instagram, it's all of this short-form video, people trying to hook your attention in the first couple seconds and... It's just like, boom, 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 fast, 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 switching, switching, scrolling. (laughs) And let's just hit after hit of information and color and light and sound. And it's a lot for our nervous systems to process. It's a lot to manage. And these are unprecedented times. Our parents didn't have to deal with this. We don't really have tools to deal with the attack that's happening on our nervous system when we're out on the interwebs, you know? So this is why I felt it was so important to start the podcast off with this subject matter because this hamster wheel that is the social media platforms can be the social media platforms can be detrimental to our mental health. And it's been proven over and over again. If you watch the documentary called The Social Dilemma, my heart absolutely shattered watching that movie. But it's so important to see the effects of social media platforms and what can happen if we don't know how to self-regulate And if we don't have a strong sense of who we are as a person, as an individual, we can be pulled in a million different directions and pulled off track so easily. And it's really affecting our young people. It's affecting people of all ages, but it's really affecting our young people. And so if we can learn tools to self-regulate our nervous systems, to bring ourselves back into balance, then we can interact with these technologies and also know how to unplug in a healthy way and find the balance. Because there's also really good things about these platforms as well. I've connected with people like yourselves all over the world through YouTube mostly, through YouTube, through Instagram, through these platforms. I've met people, beautiful soul family, that I never would have met if we didn't have the internet. So that's why this balance is important and having time to unplug. So let's just take a look at the impact of this technology on our brains. (laughs) So our devices keep us tethered to work, to social networks, to an endless stream of content. And the constant barrage of notifications keeps our minds on alert. You ever notice whenever your phone bings, your attention goes there immediately. It's constantly demanding our attention. We're constantly on alert with these notifications. And when we're constantly on alert, that doesn't leave any room for rest or relaxation. And if you never shut that phone off, if you never disconnect and allow yourself time to just unplug, it's gonna affect your sleep, it's gonna affect your mental health. And we can see there are studies that show, and I'll find them and put them in the description. There are studies that show that if we're constantly connected to these devices like this, it actually creates anxiety and stress because every time that our phone bings and we're put into alert mode, this is putting our bodies into fight or flight mode because when our brains are alerted, to something that we need to pay attention to, that alerts the body and the sympathetic nervous system to activate and get us ready for whatever might be coming. And this is ancient 
technology, if you will, in our bodies that is meant to keep us safe. You know, before we had all of our modern conveniences, we needed this system to keep us safe and we still do. (laughs) So we don't walk into traffic at the wrong time or get into dangerous situations, but our mind doesn't realize that that phone notification isn't a life-threatening event. So our nervous systems are constantly in sympathetic mode activated during the day. We are constantly on. That's why so many of us are crashing in the afternoon is because we're constantly on guard without even knowing it. Our bodies are like at the ready in case we need to run or fight, whatever. We're in fight or flight mode all day long and if we don't give ourselves a break from that we can end up exhausted and burnt out and worse disconnected from our true selves because when you're constantly on it's harder to hear your intuition when your mind is constantly active and buzzing and waiting for notifications it's hard to hear that still small voice inside of you that is there to guide you along the path. We need to rest and be still to really hear our intuition. And that's the connection that can get lost when we're constantly connected to our devices. We also lose, can lose, connection to the people who are most important in our lives when we're constantly connected to these devices and the virtual world. So many times now I'll be out, out and about, even at a coffee shop or a restaurant and see groups of people sitting at a table, all typing away on their phones. Sometimes they're even texting each other, sitting at the same table. (laughs) I never thought that I would see something like this, but it's more and more prevalent. And we're seeing more and more young people having struggles socially And even just having conversations because they're so used to texting. They're so used to that device being their mode of communication. So it's vitally important to unplug and teach our kids to unplug and have that time where we can just rest our brains, rest our bodies, and reconnect with what's real. Reconnect with nature reconnect with our families, reconnect with our friends and our kids, and reconnect with ourselves. This is so vitally important. And this is where mindfulness comes in. So mindfulness, simply put, is being fully present with whatever is happening for you right now and not judging it not having attachment and not judging it as good, bad, right, wrong, whatever. It's just being fully present with what's in front of you at the moment. And this is how we can balance out the constant connectivity of the digital age, is cultivating a practice of mindfulness. And mindfulness is basically a form of waking meditation that you bring into your entire daily life and whatever you're doing you are 100% focused on doing that thing because multitasking doesn't actually work (laughs) you might feel like you're busy doing a whole bunch of things at once but again it's been proven that multitasking actually makes you less productive and is actually damaging to your capacity to actually focus. So you will find at work, for example, if you focus on one task at a time and work on it to completion and then move on to the next thing, you will get your tasks done in less time and you will actually get more done in a day with that single-minded focus rather than having your emails open here and your phone ringer on and everything's binging at you (laughs) and you feel like you're busy all day long but then nothing actually gets done bringing mindfulness into your work practice can actually make you more productive and more efficient mindfulness invites us to pause breathe 
ground ourselves, and then move forward from that peaceful place. And it doesn't have to be a big commitment. All it needs to be is a few deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And if you want to really calm your nervous system, you can exhale as if you're breathing through a straw and do it gently, but have nice long exhales as if you're blowing through a straw. And you'll feel in your body that this just calms everything down. So let's try that for for a second together here. And take your time, let all of the air come out of your lungs. Resist the urge to rush your exhales. And if you do that a few times over, you'll feel your body start to soften and relax. This is a simple practice that you can do any time that you start to feel yourself getting ramped up or anxious or stressed, is just do this straw breath just a few times, three, four times, longer if you need. But just take your time on that exhale. Because when you take your time on the exhale, it shows your body that it's safe to relax. When we are anxious or stressed, moving through our day unconsciously, we're taking really shallow breaths. And this signals to the body and the brain that we are needing to be on alert and that something might be coming down the pipes at any moment. So when we can take some time to take deep inhales in through the nose, filling up the belly and long, slow exhales through the mouth, letting all of the air come out naturally. This signals to our bodies that it's okay to relax and that we are safe. And this is one aspect of mindfulness that you can bring into any part of your life. You can do this anywhere. You can do this on the bus. You can do this at work. You can do this while you're cooking. You can do it while you're recording a podcast. (laughs) And taking a moment to breathe and to pause really anchors you in the present moment, brings you back into your body and grounds you. When you practice this regularly, you begin to become the eye of the storm. You begin to notice that you are more calm amidst all of the storms of life. Because that's one thing that is always going to be true is life is always going to be on the move. There are always things that are going to be moving, shifting, changing, evolving, falling away, coming into our lives. Everything in our lives is always moving. But if you can take this step to anchor yourself in the moment, then it doesn't matter what's happening around you. You are anchored and calm. And you'll find that coming from a place that is anchored and calm will allow you to navigate the tumultuous happenings of life in a more rational, practical way, in a way that doesn't add to the chaos, in a way that allows you to kind of grab a surfboard and ride the wave rather than being pummeled by it, if that makes sense. So connecting with your breath is a beautiful way to start to practice mindfulness. And I've got a few other examples that I'd like to just present you can take it or leave it but there are a few ways that you can incorporate mindfulness into your daily life that will help you to find balance in this digital age because we don't want to necessarily completely disconnect ourselves from technology it is a beautiful gift however we do want to find balance 
So one of the ways that we can start to cultivate mindfulness is first thing in the morning. So rather than rolling over and checking your phone before you get out of bed, that time in the early morning is a key time to meditate because you're still kind of in in theta brain waves just coming out of sleep. It's a beautiful time to meditate even just for a few minutes and set your intention for the day. <clears throat> and I'd like to share a little intention that I picked up from Tommy Rosen. Uh, he has a program called Recovery 2.0, which is beautiful, but I picked this up from him years ago and it, it's really changed a lot for me. So every morning I get up and I say, universe, put me in the places you want me to be with the people you want me to be with doing the things that you want me to do. And that's my intention for the day to be a servant of the light to God in the universe in however, whichever way that I can be. And just stating that intention out loud really puts my heart at ease um, because I know that I don't have to muscle through the day. I just show up, do what's needed of me by the divine, and it puts me in the present moment even more. Another way to practice mindfulness is using the technology that we have mindfully. So rather than just picking up your phone and scrolling endlessly, actually setting an intention to use your technology mindfully. So setting a time limit. So if you're gonna be on your phone or your emails, you set a block of time, whether that's 15 or 30 minutes, put an alarm, like set an actual alarm that's gonna bing at you when your time is up. So you know that during that time, you can be on your technology, you can be in your emails, you can be on your social media and whatever, do what you need to do. But when that alarm goes off, you're gonna shut it off and turn your ringer off, disconnect from your socials. Starting to use your technology in a mindful and intentional way can really help us to find balance. So I find the time limit really helpful for me because otherwise I'll just get on there and start scrolling and then I can lose hours of time. <laughs> you just go down rabbit holes. So the mindful tech use for me is really helpful and just setting those time blocks. So I do emails in the morning, I do emails in the evening, and that's, that's it. The rest of the time I'm focused on my work tasks, doing one thing at a time. And it took a while to get into the habit of that. But now that I'm in that habit, I love it and I'm more productive and I actually have more downtime because of it. Another thing that we can practice, and I wanna preface this too by saying, you know, you don't have to do all of these things at once. You don't have to do anything. I'm just making suggestions. But if you're gonna take on one of these practices, I suggest just doing one at a time until it becomes a habit and then moving on to the next thing. So many times we uh, try to do too many things at once and it gets overwhelming and then the habits don't stick. So just pick one, try it out, see how it fits for you. If it doesn't, leave it. You know what's right for you. We talked earlier about some breathing techniques that you can use, like the straw breath to kind of balance and align yourself. If you're into time blocking as a productivity hack, then setting up little blocks of time for mindful breathing breaks can make a big difference in your day. And anytime you feel stressed or anxious, like I said before, just pull back, take a couple minutes to do some mindful breathing, do that straw breath. Just focus on the air coming in and out of your nose until you feel your body start to relax and then you can go back into your day. So having mindful breathing breaks like that throughout your day can make a huge difference. Another practice that you can try out is mindful movement. There are specific types of mindful mu movement that you can do such as yoga or tai chi that have you really connected with your body and what you're doing in each moment. 
But you can also take this into your daily life and become more mindful of your movements throughout your day. Becoming more mindful of your body as you're walking even. Just becoming aware of all of the muscle groups that are moving in unison to allow you to walk. Realizing the miracle that is you controlling your body with your mind. It's pretty amazing. And when you start to become more mindful of each step that you take and how it resonates with the earth and how your body moves in unison in such a beautiful and balanced way that you're able to stay upright. Just noticing these many small miracles throughout your life can bring a sense of fulfillment just for being alive. Because just being alive is a gift. So being aware of your movements while you're walking, being aware of your movements when you're speaking to someone, being aware of your movements when you're cooking or doing laundry or cleaning or working, building something, being aware of your movements when you're gardening, being aware of what your body needs, these are all small ways that we can start to cultivate mindfulness in our daily lives that don't take a bunch of extra effort. It's just opening your mind to being fully present in every moment of your day, as much as possible. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> but you just setting that intention will start to create changes in your daily life. Another practice that I've found particularly helpful is a daily digital detox. And I know it, sound, it might sound a little bit overwhelming, but hear me out. So I have specific times of the day where I don't look at my phone. And that's usually dinner time. And I like to have two to three hours in the evening before bed that I don't look at my phone or look at it very little and just allow my brain to unplug and detox from technology before going to sleep. So I don't read on my phone, I read on my Kindle or I read an actual physical book before bed just to give my eyes a break because I'm on screens all day long. <laughs> That's what I do. So having that digital detox time in the evenings before bed really helped to improve my sleep. And, uh, and I've coached other people on this as well and they found the same thing. So making time during your day where you can just unplug, maybe let your family members know if you're going to do this so they don't worry. <laughs> when you give yourself that daily time to unplug, then you don't get to a point of burnout where you just have to unplug for a week. You know, you just, we want balance here. <laughs> And then the last thing I'll go over is just a formal meditation practice. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be setting a specific time during the day that you know you're going to sit and shut your technology off and just be with your breath and be with your thoughts, be with your body, be with your emotions, whatever is there in the present moment. And just be there with yourself in a state of acceptance of whatever is there. Acceptance and compassion. And if you're looking for maybe guided meditation practices, I have quite a few of those on my YouTube channel. I also have them on the Insight Timer app if you want to go there. If you want guided ones. But sometimes it's nice to just sit in the silence and just be and allow yourself to not have any expectations not have anything that you need to do for 10 minutes and just be breathe the fresh air get some sun on your face and sit in stillness and allow your body to relax so these are just a few things that we can do to start to cultivate mindfulness and balance in this digital age. 
like I said, I think technology is a beautiful gift that we are given. And if we can learn to use it intentionally and mindfully, it can really add to our lives. So let me know what you think of these mindfulness practices in the comments. I love to hear from you. If there's anything that you'd like me to expand on, I am all ears. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast and the channel so that you get notified of when new episodes come live. We're going to have new episodes every Sunday and I uh, want this to be a part of your weekend mindfulness practice. All right, sending you tons of love and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.